Hi, Misha here. And recent event in my life last week kind of inspired this video topic. The current 2022 production Colt LE6920 US SOCOM. Or is it actually a CR6920? This is a topic because last week a person on Gunbroker bought this gun but then a day later said he wasn't going to buy it because it wasn't a true LE6920 SOCOM. That it was in fact a CR6920 and that I was falsely representing it. That I should have mentioned that it had things like the IR or excuse me, QR code on the receiver and that it has things like the cage code on the barrel which means it's not a U.S. barrel. Basically, he was saying it was not a true Colt. It was built from cheap commercial parts and that I was misrepresenting it and it was, I should call it a 6920. The question is, is there such thing as a CR6920 SOCOM with the pin and welded 14 and a half inch barrel? Because the standard CR6920 has a 16 inch barrel with the removable flash hider. And it's the government profile versus the heavy, um, you know, 920 HB style. So we're going to look at that and, you know, going to go through the things he brought up where I was trying to address them and allay his uh, suspicions and fears. Or was he right? And am I wrong? And uh, what's going on? It just seemed like an interesting thing to look at. And we'll kind of conclude with at the end of the day. Does it matter? Are the new guns quality? Are they shooting okay? Are they holding up? Or maybe they're not. Maybe they've decreased quality. Maybe they're no better than an entry tier gun now. Well, we'll look at each thing and we'll also talk about how you can tell if something is an LE6920 or a CR 6920. Talk about what the prefixes mean, serial number ranges. The, no, the meaning of cage codes, QR codes, and other fun things asundry. And if you're interested, I'll do a black box over on my personal channel. More of a story and my personal thoughts and opinions on what happened. But um, that's over there if you want to check it out. Also, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. And please do especially comment if you own a current CCR6920. I'd love to hear your experiences. And um, I mean, with that, if you could, check out the link to Patreon besides. And uh, let's just dive in on how you can tell which is wit, what is what, and uh, what's going on. Honestly, explaining how this is not this should have taken less than one minute. It doesn't say on the guns anywhere. It never has 6920 or anything like that. That's not how Colt rolls. But it does on the boxes. Here are the labels here. And that's it. I mean, what's a CR6920 versus an LE6920? SOCOM or otherwise not? what the label says and this just isn't a piece of paper this is legally what it is this is what Colt in its book when it manufactures the gun has under model because the ATF requires that it's what distributors log it in as and log it out as to dealers like myself and what dealers like myself log them out to customers as this is actually a lot more important than you might realize well if you've dealt with the government you know how much they love their numbers and and all that good stuff so you probably do understand but yeah what makes a cr versus an le 6920 whatever the label says and of course the label has the serial number of the gun which will match the gun and then bada boom bada bang that's the quick and easy answer would it surprise you to learn that was not sufficient so since we're already talking about serials, why does one have a CR prefix serial and has a CR6920 and the other 
has a CR prefix serial and is an LE 6920. So let's dive into that. So here we have the one marked disc carbine and its serial begins with CR. Here we have the current production M4A1 mark and it is marked CR. So does that make it a CR or an LE? Well, you would think, well, the early SOCOMs, well, they were LE marked. And only recently have they used the CR on the newer ones, right? I mean, at least some people would think that. Well, guess what? Here's mine, one you've seen many a time on the channel. And it's one of the earlier roll marked ones. And look what its serial number is. CR. Even I wasn't 100% sure about this, so I went back to look. I know I had seen CRs for quite some time as far as a prefix. Going back to my own personal records, the first CR prefix we got in the store was March of 2018, and it was actually a Colt lower receiver assembly. It was actually kind of cool. It came in a miniature box, like a half size box. It was pretty neat. And, it, you know, so it was a factory thing. It wasn't like a, a thing that someone had split apart. But in May of 2018, we got the first LE6920 HB PWs. HB standing for heavy barrel, so the SOCOM barrel. 14 and a half inches, so it's military length. And the PW pin and welded. To my recollection, this is the first time ever Colt did a military barrel with a pin and welded flash hider extended a2 to make it legal and from the get-go the hbpws had cr prefixed serials and i got the very first batch and the version here the le6920 socom with the u.s marking you saw how the box was marked on the current one they were similar back then u.s property this came in in September of 2018, and this was from the first batch. Again, it's quite easy to tell because it is real, uh, real marked versus laser engraved. It's CR. I'm quite confident, except, of course, as Chris said, I mentioned at the beginning, there are no rules with Colt. But by and large, unless one just slipped through, the majority, if not every single one, of the 6920s with the 14 and a half inch barrel pin and welded to 16 had CR prefixes. Keep in mind, this predated CZ's acquisition of Colt and the CR6920 model even being released. So they were going to this number quite some time before. Looking at my records, the very first mention of a CR Colt actually was one of their match target guns going back to like 2012 and that's just my records so they started using CR quite some time ago for various guns they just decided to standardize on it in more recent time now this laser engraving the reason that the roll marked guns are so uncommon in the SOCOMs these came out right before the switch to laser engraving this appeared in late 2018 early 2019 so the vast majority of the SOCOMs are laser engraved that's simply how contract guns and civilian guns and police guns are done now it's more economical you have one laser it's easy to reprogram for different markings whereas a roll mark that costs money and you have to change out the production line the rollers when you do it and then when they wear out they're expensive maybe you like the look of it but also the thing about a roll mark there were complaints and i had some in the store the beginning and the end could be very faint with the middle stamped deeper some didn't like that one nice thing about laser at least in theory it should be uniform identical depth so it is in some ways neater why do people prefer the roll mark it's it's traditional and personally i like it because i can feel it more so i'm with you there i like it more than laser but if I had the choice of either no SOCOM at all or a laser one, 
I'm, I'm going with freaking laser beams. I'm not shaming anyone for wanting an LE prefix. What I'm saying is if you want a factory SOCOM with the 14 and a half inch barrel, none of them were LE prefixed. But Colt buyers are into markings, so I brought these out now. This is the LE type marking. And it was first used in 1994 when the assault weapons ban came in. So the police guns, which were semi-autos, this is 16 inches, but would not have been allowed for public use because of the collapsing stock, bayonet lug, so on and so forth. Even after the sunset, these markings would continue to appear until about 2008, give or take, as Colt used up their existing stock. Yeah, they had quite a few of them. And when they went to this, kind of slap side here, people didn't like it. Flipping over, here's the other side of the restricted markings. And because this is an earlier gun, it actually is not LE prefixed. The LE came later during the ban. Earlier guns had different prefixes because they do change. Here is the M4 prefix that replaced, or M4 roll mark that replaced the LE. Again, some people really poo-pooed it. Personally, I thought it was cool that we were getting M4 marked guns finally. So I actually liked it. I didn't like all this legal gobbledygook on my gun, but these LE marked lowers tend to bring a bit of a premium. Now looking at this, you can see that is a LE prefix serial. That means it's a LE 6920, right? It's a police gun. Wrong. Fooled you. This is a 14 and a half inch upper. This lower though actually came off a Colt CE 1000. Translation, the Colt Expanse. That's right. Those guns that everyone hated that definitely didn't have true Colt barrels. They weren't chromed. They were the heavy profile. They actually came with LE marked serial numbers. I looked at this one. This came into the shop February of 2016, this particular lower. But because Colt uses whatever lowers are laying around and they had plenty of LE M4 lowers around, that's just what they mated to the Expanse upper. It's also worth pointing out that their OEM 1s and OEM 2s at the time were M4 marked and LE prefixed, even though they weren't necessarily LE guns. In fact, you could buy them at Walmarts. So Walmarts guns were uh, <laughs> LE marked. Funny story back then too, there was a rumor going around that the guns at Walmart, because they were cheaper, were actually built with substandard parts, or otherwise were budget guns. Would it surprise you to learn this was not true? The reason Walmart was able to sell them so cheaply is because they were able to buy so many from Colt, and at this time Colt had the excess production capacity in guns, so they were happy to dump them. For years, during the assault weapons ban and even right after, Colt resisted selling to the civilian market, but this attitude changed around 2010 to 2012. In fact, that's where the 2013 model came from. Now, these do not have something that even my SOCOM has right here. So, let's talk about that. The barcode, or QR code. These seem to have started to appear in 2017 or 2018. Well, what does it say? Well, not much. It has the gun's serial, and it has Colt's cage code. That's the only information it really has. So it's duplicated. I, when it first came out, some people fretted and worried that it would make guns easier to track. Trust me, as a dealer, as an FFL... It has no bearing. This actually started off because of UID stickers, OOD stickers. Initially, they would put cage codes and serial numbers and, and, and you know barcodes on stickers on lowers. You've seen them on my guns. You've seen them on others. Well, stickers can come off. This is a more permanent way. So it's more of a military thing or a police thing. I actually thought it was kind of cool that it's on the civilian sold guns because it kind of gives it that air of, hey, this is the same thing. At the very least, it, it means nothing. It's just a way if you took a scanner, put it in your phone, you can do it now if you can get it. 
it just has the serial number and the uh, code's code code. So that's it. There's really not much more to say about it, guys. This is a Colt lower. This is a Colt lower. The ones we saw earlier are Colt lowers. There's one easy way to prove it too, because there's one thing that Colt does that basically no one else does. This it's kind of stupid web here or place that's not machined out. That was done so that a full auto or a lightning link or whatever could not be dropped in. That was a major concern of Colt. They had other methods in the past, including a block that they put in here with a little finger that stuck up into the uh, upper receiver that did not allow for an M16 bolt carrier to go in. They also, at various times in the past, during the assault weapons ban, had oversized fire control group pins. Thankfully, they kind of went to standard pins. And, of course, way back when, during the days of the SP-1, they had a larger front pivot pin. This is a standard point two five zero. They used a point three two zero, and it wasn't even a captive push pin. It was actually a double-headed screw. They like double-headeds. And there was actually a transitional one where they had a, a 250 front pin, but it had a small screw that held it on and no spring. Yeah, Colt's always done weird things to their lowers to make sure they can't go full auto. And the fact that the current CRs still have this silly web kind of tells me that yeah it's a cult lower for better or worse in fact if you look at the Vietnam reissue guns which we know were outsourced they don't have it in there the A1 replica lowers that they used did not have that web thought I'd point that out so I mentioned that the QR code gives the cage code and that was something that also had our gentleman very concerned. In fact, he was quite insistent. It meant that these were not Colt parts. The funny thing is, it means exactly the opposite. So let's talk cage codes. The commercial and government entity code, or cage code, is supplied to any company, organization, or even government organization sometimes, that wishes to do business with the DOD. And they get assigned to it, and there you go. The license is valid for five years. It's a randomly assigned five-digit code, and it's actually international. While the majority of uh, cage code holders are in America, well over two million, there are still hundreds of thousands in places like Britain, and it's actually part of the NSN, the uh, National Stock Number which, you know, appears on NATO stuff. And it was actually first known as the uh, Federal Supply Code for Manufacturers, FSCM. So this isn't something new. And uh, Coates, uh, co uh, code is uh, 13629. And that's what appears on these barrels. And on places like the receiver. Now, not all of your current guns are going to come with uh, cage-coated parts. People have reported charging handles with it, although it's pretty uncommon. Even trigger guards, I think I've heard of. I've never seen one or had one. But what does seem to be common is the barrel. The barrel is cage code and this isn't new here my socom is again and it has the ns excuse me it has the cage code on it also has it on the receiver here and uh it's just it actually shows that this is a government part or at least coming from the same production line i would be more concerned if it didn't have it frankly so far from meaning that it um is a subcontracted part it actually just means that it is a government inspected part that's not to say the barrel may not be subcontracted but i have news for you colt at various times has used subcontracted barrels and back in fact early ar-15s in the 60s had barrels made by winchester wilson barrels have appeared as of others throughout time that's the point of gi and mil spec amongst other things parts should be interchangeable 
if one company is running behind, another company can uh, fill in the gap. We saw this quite strongly in World War II with, for example, M1 carbines. And uh, other manufacturers, like say this uh, Knights Armament Quadro, it has uh, cage code 2. Knights is uh, IS002. It's just part of it. It's modernity. Uh, some bolts have them, what have you. But of course, it wasn't always the case. We had other codes eventually. I mean, back in the day. So let's go back a bit. Bet you didn't think I could find a reason to bring the uh, SP1 out for this. But this is a 1965 example. And it's actually very important. Because back then, only Colt was making AR-15s. So there's only parts available. It wasn't until 1968 that we started seeing the C be required because then you had other manufacturers coming online to build them, like, say, Hydromatic. That's why there's not much here on the uh, carry handle. Whereas later, you will see a forge code on this uh, A1 type. And if you look at the barrel on top, you'll see nothing. Does that mean it's a fake? Of course not. Back then, they marked them in different places in different ways. Part of it is under the barrel. Sorry, guys, I need to find myself here. Ah, I've lost myself. Sorry, our brother lost you. Some markings there. The twist rate. And we have this for the testing under the front side base. And this actually would change over time this isn't the first marking and it would change later we would get the C like I said of course for Colt we would uh, first have MPC for chrome lined chamber then MPB for chrome lined bore and then later we'd actually get fully typed out MP chrome lined bore and I guess they just felt like being and that that didn't appear to the 70s here's this A1 Notice that's different here, here. This one's markings are on the underside. Of course, twist rate and all that. So when we get up here, is it any wonder that, uh, yeah, things change over time in the years? Just before I put it up, I wanted to look at the lower markings. See, that's the larger front pin. I replaced it. Early guns had this plus on the lower, but that was soon dropped. Does that mean that guns without the plus are not true Colt lowers? Of course not. And just to look at the markings on the side. Of course, the serial number starts with SP. Does that mean that guns that don't have an SP serial aren't true? Of course not. It would change many times over the years. And does that mean it was only a sporter sold to civilians? Again, of course not. Plenty of SP1s went to police departments. Maybe not military, but police departments. So these are service grade weapons, just without the go fast switch and uh, some precautions taken by Colt to make sure that uh, yeah, they couldn't be. Also note that the selector stops are gone. We'll come back to that in just a second. But let's look at the markings on the newer guns. We get into the 80s and kind of a NATO standardization on the 1 and 7 twist and the in the 62 grain. And Colt moves the markings to the top of the barrel. This is the CMP 556 we're all kind of accustomed to. That, that just seems like it's a correct Colt barrel. What's funny is some people that have bought older Colt guns, maybe not this exact type, but maybe ones worn like this, have actually reported that under the handguards are markings to show that the barrel, while it's proof tested by Colt, MP tested, magnetic particle, were actually subcontracted barrels. Because again, if there, it's a military grade barrel, that's fine. In fact, you see it with the uh, Swiss SIGs. Not only did SIG themselves make the barrels, but Hammerly and Burn made barrels. Although, SIG did final testing. Here's the markings here for the M4. Again, C, M, P, it's chrome bore, Colt, yada, yada, yada. But in more recent times, Colt 
started stamping their parts with cage codes. You know, back in the day when you just had, uh, you know, a few dozen suppliers and only a few were making AR-15 parts, you could get away with uh, an alphabetical, you know, letter code, you know, C for cult. But with international cooperation, more and more people using AR-15s, a five-digit code that is letters and numbers randomly assigned does make more sense. So the reason for the use of cage codes and the parts starting to get stamped with them. Again, they started off appearing on UID stickers, but this is a little more permanent because sometimes Colt wouldn't supply a complete gun. They would just supply replacement parts. Plenty of guns have perfectly good receivers, but the barrels are shot out, so Colt needed to supply a barrel. Well, just having C on it might start to get confusing when you have that many companies. So having a numerical system, it's just uh, that's how things change. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter. They're still MP stamped and tested. And even if the style of the MP changes, maybe it's written differently, they're smushed together or further apart. So what? It's changed uh, you know, a, a dozen times over the years. Fonts change, things change. Just because something changes doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative change. It just means time moves on. New machinery, new ideas, new requirements and not all changes are bad just a second ago I asked you to remember the fact that the selector stops were machined off on the SP1 that's something that Colt has continued for a very long time here and even into the CR 6920 series here but with just the most recent production the ones that have been produced since CZ picked them up for the first time we actually have the selector stops left on. It's a small thing. It's inconsequential. I still like it. And again, it still has the web inside, so I, I trust that it's a cult receiver. It's just a forging anyway, so you know, a receiver in AR doesn't take a lot of force either way. But I think that's one of those tiny small things. Maybe CZ stepped in and said, why are you guys doing this? And the answer was probably, we've always done it this way. And they said, stop. It's a couple of extra machining steps. And it makes it, you know, a little more appealing to people, I would think, to have your stops there. It just seems more natural. Everyone else does it. That's the kind of thing you, you honestly want to see when a new company picks up an old one. And keep in mind that Colt hasn't really been an independent company in a long time. They've been owned by various other entities going way back frankly CZ picking them up I think is one of the best things possible I don't want to crack these open but another thing I wanted to point out too back in the day SP1s all through these had very cut back bolt carriers in the tail to make them semi-automatic only since around 2008-2009 they've been shipping all of their guns with M16 spec bolt carriers this includes a properly staked gas key yes and the gas key is chrome lined inside but it also means the tail of the bolt is full spec not only do i like this for just being authentic i like it because it gives a little bit more mass a little bit more inertia for the bolt closing i just like it i don't there's no reason to shave it back and so it is nice to actually see that newer colts over the last decade or two have gotten away from that civilianizing because some of the late sp1s say late 70s early 80s and some of the sporters and everything were really neutered for the civilian market and that was colt doing it voluntarily so it's nice that they're uh, you know not doing as much now i just wanted to point that out because i do think that's actually a nice little change but it's hard to point it out to people sometimes I also think it's great that they, for the first time, did those 14 and a half inch barrels. And that's why I think these are definitely surplus, leftover, government contract run barrels. I see no reason at all Colt would machine a 14 and a half inch barrel explicitly intended for the civilian market, going to the trouble of making the 203 cutouts under here, only to have to pin on a flash hider. No, if they did that, they would have done like they've always done in the past, 
they would make a 16 inch barrel and otherwise roll with it so I feel very confident in saying this is a leftover either one mine or the newer one is a leftover contract barrel so even if it isn't a Colt barrel and I'm not saying it isn't have it pulled off the handguard it's a government spec barrel and frankly that's what counts that's what matters and if we're going to be nitpicky which is definitely the territory we're into anyone who bought a 16 inch barreled le 6920 even if it had the restricted roll markings on it that's not a military spec barrel militaries don't use the 16 inch barrel you can easily tell them look at the spot here the distance and then it's extended out here for the 16 so once you know what to look for, you can easily tell one in a picture. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying if you want to get these people that are all about government spec and all that, any 16-inch barrel isn't. And that's the thing, too. People have older guns, and they are assuming they're going to bed at night safe in the knowledge that their gun is 100% cold. But do they know it? Of course not, because almost every manufacturer for the last 50 years, especially in the 21st century with AR-15, uses subcontracted parts. It could be something as small as a magazine. I mean, heck with this, we know this is a Knight's Armament handguard. This is a Maytech rear sight. Buttstock, you think Colt molds these? They stamp them with their code or maker's mark, sure. Pistol grip? I don't know. Thing is, why should one maker, why should every company make flash hiders? That's silly. I like the kind of um, idea that one company specializes in something. You know, just uh, makes that and makes it really well. Like Metgar. Metgar makes the OEM mags for so many pistols and even rifles. They're really good at making magazines, so why not outsource parts to someone who's really talented at making that part? Fire control groups or bolt groups, for example. The, uh, what are the microbus groups that a lot of manufacturers use. Even forgings, not the com completed ones, but the raw forgings for a long time were only made by a couple of companies, and then they were sent to various manufacturers and they would machine them out. Subcontracting isn't a bad thing if there is final testing and if the people assembling it know what they're doing. That's really the key with an AR-15. You can have all the best parts in the world, but if you don't properly install your barrel or your gas block or even your trigger group, I've seen people install them incorrectly, it won't work right. So if you have tested parts, government Spect parts and people who know what they're doing it works for example on these colts the gas tube excuse me the uh, receiver extension is staked in two places as it should be as is the gas key inside interestingly these are four position stocks still most manufacturers for years have used six position but the government spec is still four for this tube. So that's what Colt rolls with. Same goes for the gas port in the barrel. It's specced for NATO ammunition. That's why sometimes these guns, especially the 14-inch guns with the heavy buffers in here, don't run steel cased really well, especially when brand new. That's just what it is. The type of chroming, the depth of chroming, the consistency, all specified. H2 buffer for this type of heavy 14 and a half inch barrel. H buffer specified for the standard government profile barrel. It's kind of a thing too. Just pointing that out. Of course, what does mil spec really mean? Does it mean it's the bestest ever? No, actually it can mean the opposite. It means it's cheap enough the government can afford to buy a lot of them. So mil spec is kind of the bare minimum. Plenty of makers make better than mil spec. Above mil spec is 
a good thing. No spec is the bare minimum that passed testing, but that's also the good thing too. It did pass testing, meaning that you know, in theory, because anyone can have a defective part. I've used the example of Wasser 10s before. We know that they can go thousands upon thousands of rounds. I've also seen a couple crack a trunnion after a couple of hundred rounds. It was a faulty part. It happens, even with MP testing. But that is why we do magnetic particle test the bolt and barrel on an AR-15 to try to look for small imperfections before they turn into big imperfections. <laughs> but so with mil-spec, you know you have that kind of minimum requirement. And it goes for accuracy too. Mil-spec accuracy requirements are not great. They're the minimum. So above mil-spec is perfectly fine. But what I do like about mil-spec, it means each gun is MP tested and test fired. A lot of makers batch test their guns. And a lot of makers don't necessarily test fire every gun they ship. Not saying your favorite company doesn't, but some don't. As far as I know, even today, and I could be wrong, it's hard to prove this stuff, but what small evidence I've seen shows that Colt still MP tests and then test fires each of their guns. So at least there was someone before you who hopefully knew guns going through it, and you're not the very first person to make a controlled explosion inside it. Boy, that's something that could be taken out of context. Moving on. So back to our friend who bought this gun on Gunbroker and did not want to pay for it because he thought it was built from substandard non-spec parts. I pretty much told him everything I've told you, maybe slightly more condensed. I try to get him to just call me. It's easier to answer questions. That way you're not wasting your time addressing things that they're not interested in and they can ask you. But he wouldn't get me on the phone, which is uh, never a good sign. So the next step, after talking about why CR doesn't mean much of anything and that all LE 6920 US SOCOMs were CR prefixed, so on and so forth, and that the 13629 code actually means Colt, I started to realize I don't think he understands the difference between a standard 6920 and 6920 SOCOM. Because I was trying to explain that Yes, there is a CR6920, but all the SOCOMs that I've seen, at least up until this point of the video, are under the LE label. I just looked on the Colt website. They don't list a CR6920 US SOCOM. So by having the M4A1 marking, US property, instead of the carbine, that means it is a SOCOM gun. Again, mine up here, marked the same way. No big difference, except it's roll marked instead of laser etched. But again, the majority are laser etched. So I tried saying, look, another thing of the barrels. The CR6920 16-inch barrel, removable flash rider. SOCOM, 14.5-inch heavy barrel, pinned on flash rider. Never seen a CR marked gun with that. Okay, fine. Also, the Knight's Armament handguard. This has the plastic or whatever. This comes with this along with the Maytac rear sight. And this has the Magpul rear sight. Both have the same buttstock. Although this has an H2 buffer, this has an H buffer. So you're seeing differences. Also the accessory kits they come with are different. This has one Magpul mag and manual and cable lock in here. This actually has an old school Colt steel or not steel but alloy metal mag you know what i mean with the pony on the bottom and it has an extra rail cover too and it has the knight's armament foregrip manual and cable lock so different accessories there's other one other thing that kind of made me just roll my eyes he thought this side sling mount was wrong he he kind of got hung up on that for a minute guys this is something that colts have had for a long time in fact the first 6920s I ever saw back in like 2005 had this and that's what stood out to me versus say a Smith & Wesson in fact it would be the standard piece and as a true mil spec part it's even reversible right or left up until 2013 when that model came out and the bottom sling mount started to appear on Colts instead 
little bit cheaper, fine. It usually doesn't matter. Notice it's riveted on here, you can take it off. Even though this has the side mount and it can be unpinned, it still has the bracket down here, so you could put a bottom sling swivel on if you prefer. But I always thought this style was cool, and I think it's more practical too, and again, it's, it's reversible, it's ambidextrous. So I was like, and that's when I started to realize this guy doesn't even know what most old school 6920s were set up like. And yet, he's the one insisting this is not a real cult, a cult, nor is this. Keep in mind, he didn't buy this one. I just brought it out for the video to compare. And I'm showing him videos from myself, Military Arms Channel, several other owners. But he keeps referring back to the Chris Bartachi CR6920 video. That was a gun like this. He, Chris, did not have a SOCOM. I could not convince this guy, but Chris happened to call me around the time, and I didn't even ask him. Chris volunteered. He's like, well, I can talk to the guy and explain that that's just, this is a correct gun. Because when I got mine up here, I ran it by Chris to, you know, make sure it's at least legitimate enough for government work, pun intended. So Chris said, hey, I'll, I'll hop on the phone with him for 15 minutes. So I wrote back and said, hey, how about I just set you up on a phone call and you can you know, get on the phone with the guy who wrote Black Rifle 2 and the guy's video you're actually referring back to over and over. And would you believe, you probably would, he, nope, he didn't want to do that. At this point, he'd already asked another seller on Gunbroker about things. Here's the problem. That seller was selling not a 6920 of any type. He was selling a 6940. Cool gun. Not the same thing as either of these. So asking that guy about his gun isn't really helpful. And I'm realizing now this guy is one of those I got on Google for five minutes. And I'm an expert. And I'm not going to listen. Not to me. Okay, fine. I'm selling the gun. Maybe he thinks I'm a... But I was actually kind of surprised he didn't want to talk to Chris. Most people pay money to do that. And Chris was offering to do it just to help me out as a friend. Because, um... Well, he's not really keen on a lot of the newer Colts. This is one of the few that um, he kind of wishes he would pick up. Because it's as close to a true M4A1 as we're ever going to see from them. So there we go. So at this point, you might be wondering why I'm still trying with this guy. I'm really not. I, I know there's no sale. But he did buy it on Gunbroker. And at this point, I'm just... The, the teacher in me is just trying to explain some things. But it's it's not going anywhere. He doesn't want to know or learn. And that's all you can do. So there it is. But it seemed like an interesting topic for a video. So with that, let's just kind of end by evaluating each model. We'll use the CR6920 here, and we'll use this gun as kind of a stand-in for the early ones. Of course, the original LE6920 was released during the assault weapons ban, so unless you were a police officer, you could not get one. But of course, after that was over, you could get them, but it was very difficult. And here's the thing. People today consider the 6920s expensive. I'm not sure I agree. There's not a whole lot of a premium over a kind of equal AR. But back then, because of the channels you had to go through to get them, they were truly expensive. Fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars at a time when most ARs were, you know, eight hundred. You did get a little bit more back then. You got the military stock. You did get the carry handle. They came with the M4 handguards, the side mount, 16-inch barrel, unlike this one, which is 14 and a half with the thing I'm pinned on. And they were, of course, still roll marked. Now, the accessory kit they came with was quite nice. You got a sling, two 20-round metal mags, and a cleaning kit in a bag. But they still came in a cardboard box, although slightly nicer one. But once Colt kind of started wanting to sell them, but to more, you started to see things change. And then the, the 2013 model really was when it was 
settled on. You for a while had different stocks. There was the Rogers Super Stock, then the Magpul Stock. I'm actually happy that they've returned to the M4 butt stock. They dropped the side mount and went to a bottom sling mount, which continues. And of course, the accessory kit dwindled to just a Magpul mag. And the carry handle would go away and be replaced with a Magpul flip backup sight. I mean, at least it does come with a backup sight, which is one you can save for some. But yeah, and that was the 2013 model. And if you looked on the boxes, that's still what it says for some. Now it's worth pointing out that yeah, originally we had the C mark along with the keyhole. We still have the keyhole mark, or at least similar, and that's been replaced with 13.629. Ditto for the barrel. We originally have uh, CMP, of course, as we've talked about. Now we have 13.629. That's what's taken the place. Now. I will say to Colt, they and it seems like maybe they're getting better. They do they do need to standardize because if you buy a CR6920, you may or may not get a cage coated upper. It seems like the barrels are cage coated at least for the most part, but the upper and the bolt are kind of an if thing. They need to standardize on it, and it does seem like they are. I'm seeing more of them now. Another neat thing they are doing, they have the. Uh, safe and fire marks on this side with the tick mark on the safety earlier they didn't i added it to this one but you know for a while they did not handguard some have said this is no longer a military handguard i don't know it has the heat shield in it it is the ovular shape and what have you you know, going from a roll mark to a laser engraved just as a sign of the time. Same with the QR code. And I was really hoping I could at least explain that LE prefix serials meant nothing. And that the CR prefix serial it doesn't mean anything aside from the kind of the batch it was made in. I was sincerely worried he might get a Colt Expanse gun. Or at least something built off of it because they were LE prefixed. Again, you could buy an LE prefix gun at Walmart. They, they're they not anything. And of course, technically, law enforcement, they're civilians too. But what's important is you do get the H buffer and properly staked castle nut, properly torqued in barrel, of course, and so on and so forth. And that kind of gets me to this point. The new guns, and I've looked around, they seem to be working just fine. People are reporting very good reliability, good accuracy, and upper to lower fit from the ones I picked up. They're actually quite nice and tight with minimal play, but you know, no more than any other AR. They are still coming with chrome lined barrels, one and seven twist. If they work, they work. And Chris did say that in his video, but I think people miss that. He said more than once that he's not saying the new guns are bad. He's just questioning the make of the parts. He's also said that if he can find one that has 13.629 mark parts, that's what he's looking for because he trusts that those are authentic military or at least government grade parts. The, uh, the hammer in this is marked, uh, is proof stamped as well, by the way. But the thing is, the guns are working. People are happy with them that actually buy them. So it really just does come down to the markings. These are true Colt guns. They come from Connecticut. If some of the parts are subcontracted, so what? Other makers use subcontracted parts. What's important is, are the subcontracted parts, if there even are any, quality? And so far, seems to be. People aren't reporting bolts breaking. We're not opening them up to see standard buffers instead of H buffers. We're still seeing MP stamping. I have no reason to assume that that's a fake stamp. I mean, if Colt says it's MP tested, I, I'm going to go with it. Whatever. I, I don't know. 
I'm just not going to automatically assume because things have changed. They've gotten worse. And those who've owned and fired these aren't reporting issues. And that, to me, is what's important. Because these aren't being sold, the CR-6920, as collectible guns. They're being sold as shooters. And that's what Colts have always been. They've never been particularly pretty. They've never had the best fit and finish. What they've had was durability and dependability. And that seems to have carried over to the CR-6920. Which is, frankly, no less than I'd expect with CZ kind of overlooking things. I actually do like the change in ownership. Because, again, Colt as a company hasn't really been truly independent in a very long time. So, considering that these are somewhere between 1000 and $1,200 right now, brand new, maybe even cheaper on the sale. You're not paying much more than from any other, you know, middle of the road, mid-tier AR-15. So for that, it's fine. And I honestly think in years to come, decades to come, even though today people make a big deal out of this or that or the other, I don't think it'll matter a whole lot. Maybe they'll still give a little bit of a premium for LE or law enforcement only, but I think this will still be recognized as a Colt, especially if Colt actually ever does go fully out of business or quits making guns with adjustable stocks. If there's like a pre-band, post-band thing again, it'll automatically become worth more. Who knows, guys? The laws could change again, like during the assault weapons ban. So this is just a shooter gun. Which is what the 6920 always has been. It's only the market that's kind of made them quote unquote collectible. Again, back when you could go to Walmart and buy them or Academy or Cabela's, people weren't viewing them as collectible. They were viewing them as a good base for a custom gun or a shooter gun. And that's what this still is. At least it seems to be. They've been on the market long enough now that if we were having barrel problems or bolt problems, we would have seen it. So with that... What about the SOCOM version that kind of started the topic of this whole video? As I said when I did a video when the current 2022 versions came in, I'm impressed. For one, I wasn't expecting them to come with all of the same exact accessories as my original one here. Again, mine was the first production run from 2018 that came with the same handguard, knights, foregrip, Maytech sight, even the same barrel, pin and welded. Of course, I put the Surefire on mine, but same cage code there, same cage code on the receiver. All the same. Same ambidextrous safety. Some people say there's a cage code on these two, but I haven't taken them off to see. It's a military safety. Of course, I've customized mine a little bit, different stock. Of course, I put uh, uh, aim point on it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm really surprised because in the past when Colt did the LE 6920 SOCOM 1 and SOCOM 2, back in the day, those are the ones that had the heavy barrel but didn't have the 203 cuts and they were 16 inches. They actually kind of did a bit of a bait and switch with the handguard. They originally sold them with the Knight's Armament. Then they switched over to, I think it was a Troy. That was back, what, 2000. Uh, 2012 time period 2011 the SOCOM 2's back then they were with the Daniel Defense and the low profile block those were original SOCOMs but what was about them they had the heavy barrel but again didn't have the cutouts below it and they were 16 versus 14.5 inches and they didn't say US property so in every way I like this current generation more. And looking on this side, can you really tell me the difference between this one and this one? They, they're they the same gun. I mean, different year production, sure, but same gun. And you know how much I've always enjoyed this gun. I've shot it a good bit, and it is just a pleasure. And flipping them over, they're again identical on this side. With really the difference just being engraved, row marked, which was a switch made in 2019, before CZ bought the company, even before the CR 6920 was released. Yes, this says 
CR prefix serial? Both do. So what? That's something Colt used a long time ago. So his assertion that this is a CR6920 is quite rich, considering this model came out years before the CR6920 even existed in Colt's catalog. Because the serial number style prefix predates it. Hope that makes uh, sense. So if this isn't a legit LE6920 SOCOM, even though its box doesn't say so, well then, this isn't either. And I tell you, I've had this gun over four years. I enjoy the hell out of it. So it's not stopped me from doing that. And it's as close as we're going to get from Colt for an M4A1, which is pretty much the last government contract maybe in the AR family ever. Especially if the M5 actually takes off. So when Military Arms General called this a modern collectible, it is. But it's my kind of collectible. As in the kind that you can still shoot and enjoy. Collectibles are great, but I don't like ones that have to be put up on a shelf. I like the ones you can get out there and really get down with. And since Colts aren't pristine, perfect fit and finish, a few scratches and wear and tear, it just adds character in my opinion. And because this is a replica of a military contract gun using actual military contract parts like the barrel, and in the case of both of these, the upper, while some of them may not have the 13, 6, 29 uppers, it just depends. Yeah, I think it'll be worth more. When the original SOCOM 1s and SOCOM 2s went out of production back in 2013 or whenever that was, their prices, any M4A1 marked lower gun, went crazy. I saw guys paying over 1500 just for the lower, just for the markings. Cool your jets, guys. And then, of course, these came out. And it's like, okay, well, there you go. And now these have U.S. property. Now, I know you can say the U.S. property isn't identical in the way it's font and all that's done. Of course not. It's a replica. It's a civilian version. It's a semi-auto. They don't want it to be completely mistaken for one because that causes trouble for Colt and for the owners. Now, some might say, what about the FN Collector Series, the M4, the M16A4 they do? They're really good guns. But they're not even built in the same factory as FN's military contract guns. They can't be because they don't own the TDP. Good guns, but they're commercial. These at least are built in the same factory using many of the same parts just on a semi-automatic lower receiver. I have to wonder if that's maybe why they use the CR prefix from the very beginning because with this barrel maybe they were concerned they were getting too close to government with the u.s property so they wanted to do something to make it very apparent this was not a military or law enforcement select fire gun that's just a thought i had either way i've had a great deal of fun shooting this gun and i do think it fills a spot in my collection and i see no difference with it and the current version aside from the style and the markings changing. Accessories are the same, fit and finish is equal, parts are the same, cage codes, markings are the same. If I enjoy owning this gun, I don't see why someone looking for a Colt M4A1 would not enjoy this gun. And Colt doesn't make many of these, and when they're gone, well, we saw what they did during COVID when you couldn't get them, so I... I'm thoroughly impressed. It's a LE6920 US SOCOM. That's just what it is, guys. And if it isn't, neither is this one. Neither is yours, neither is mine. At that point, we're not even splitting hairs. We're splitting lint or something. In the end, I tried my best, but some people think they know it all. And once you think you know it all, that's when problems start. With Colts, you never know it all, trust me. Because they kind of grab parts. And there's all kinds of interesting stories and configurations out there. And that's actually what's fun. But you have to be willing and happy to be a student. That's why I like studying early SP1s. But it's also fun to study 6920s of all stripes and types too. 
because uh, there's some interesting aberrations out there. With the uh, guns only marked carbine, I get how that upsets some people. It is nice to see that at least the newer AR-15 A4 rifles are back to being marked AR-15 A4. That was a good change. It's also a hopeful sign that CZ is listening. Same goes, the newer guns I've received in have had the cage coated upper. I hope that continues because I do think we we need that. It's just like having the C on it. And it's such a visible thing. The barrel and the upper at least need to have that. It's just It's just part of it. It's a thing. But, um, oh well. Like I said, I have a black box video I'll put up on my personal channel with more of the story and personal thoughts. I was just wanted, I thought this was a good jumping off point for hopefully an educational video on what's going on. But, at the end of the day, guys, just, we should probably all just be happy cults are still being made at all. And hopefully CZ will steer the ship in the right direction. And I, I'm really happy they reintroduced the 6920 SOCOM. I love them to do other other kind of commemorative guns. I was hoping for a long time they'd do a, a Mark 18 motto or even Mod 1, but now nah, I don't I don't know. I like a Mark 12, but that's probably asking a lot from Colt. Probably should just be happy we got an M4A1 and an AR-15A4 that's a good project base for a... Um, you know, 69 uh, for a M16 A4. And speaking of the AR15 A4, it's not perfect. It needs things changed and it has the M4 feed ramps. So if you want to use these guns as a base for something, they might not be 100% perfect, but they're a good foundation. And that's kind of what the 6920's always been and why the OEM 1 and OEM 2 were such good ways to get started. And I still trust that the people putting these together or doing it correctly after all they still have the TDP and they are still supplying to the government if not complete guns all the time at least spare parts who knows there you have it folks but again check out my black box if you'd like to know more if you own a 6920 that's been made in the last couple of years I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments um, so you know drop it down there just seemed like a fun update to do. I get if someone doesn't want a newer one. I'm just trying to give a perspective that as a shooter, I see nothing that scares me about this one. And as a collectible, I see really no reason why this is no more or less desirable than my own LE 6920 SOCOM M4A1. They didn't change anything at all, much to my surprise and delight, frankly. So... That's my take and, you know, just my opinion, but I will say that my own gun has been 100% reliable and a great shooter. So it's in entirely possible for Colt to make good guns post-2009 or 2013 or whatever arbitrary date someone wants to pick. Because at the end of the day, that it is just an arbitrary date. Every generation of Colt has pros and cons. Large trigger pins, weird front pinhole... Weird blocks in the receiver, cutback bolt carriers, whatever. Colt's a funny place. They always have been, probably always will be. So, the fact that some of the newer guns have some weird quirks, eh, that tells me they're actually Colt's. I get kind of suspicious if they were 100% right, because then I'm like, who, who are you and what have you done with the real Colt? Because Colt's always been a little strange. <laughs> but anyway... Appreciate you hanging out with me. And like I said earlier, uh, please do comment, especially if you own a fired one. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, hey, there's always Patreon. We'll be back with a range video very soon. And until then, this is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.